So in this problem, we're told a boat whose speed in still water is 2.7 meters per second must cross a 280 meter wide river and arrive at the point 120 meters upstream from where it starts. To do so, the pilot must head the boat at a 45 degree upstream angle. What is the speed of the river's current? So uh, let's kind of understand what we have going on here. So we have this boat, it's gonna start right here, and we know it's gonna initially travel at an angle 45 degrees uh, right here like this. And it's gonna travel 280 meters this way, 120 meters this way, and then uh, it's gonna finish right here. We're trying to find uh, the speed of the river current. So the way we're gonna do this is a little tricky, but the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is to split um, the initial velocity. So we know its initial velocity is 2.7 meters per second. We're gonna to wanna to split this into X and Y components. So when I'm referring to X and Y, this is our Y. So traveling this way, we're gonna call the Y. So this would be your Y axis. And then we also have an X axis this way. So because we're going to split it into them traveling in the x direction velocity and the y velocity. And you'll see why in a second, but let's first go ahead and do that. So uh, to do to split it into its x and y components, let me show you how we would do that. So you kind of want to imagine it like a triangle. So imagine this right here is our triangle. So we've got one like this, one like this, and one like this. So this right here is our angle that we're traveling at. So they tell us it's 45 degrees uh, to the horizontal. So if you imagine it like this, uh, we're going to be 45 degrees this way because these these two add up to 90, so we can just write it like this. It's 45 degrees. So they make it easy by choosing that, but essentially the angle is going to be 45 degrees uh, between here. So uh, we can choose this to be 45 degrees, or they tell us actually. And then we know the magnitude is 2.7 meters per second, which is our um, this value right here, or the hypotenuse. So this is 2.7. And we want to solve for it in the x. So this is our x direction, as I said, and the y. So we're going to find the components of velocity in the x and y. Uh, so what we need to do is uh, going to use trig. So there's two functions, trig, sine and cos. We're going to use one of each or one of each to solve for the x and the y. So we're going to use um, cosine for the x. So you should know from trig that the cosine of an angle is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. So that would be x over 2.7. So to solve for your x component, all you have to do is just multiply both sides by 2.7. And now we have x, our, our x component of this uh, velocity is just 2.7 cos of 45. So now we have our x component, which is good. And now we're going to need to find the y component. So instead of using cos, we're gonna use sine now. So you should know the sine of an angle is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. So opposite side of our angle here is the y over 2.7. So y over 2.7, uh, and then you just multiply both sides again to get it by itself. You're gonna find the y component is equal to 2.7 sine of 45. And so uh, what I'm gonna do now is just plug these in to get the actual value. So I don't have to leave it in this trig form. So 2.7 cos of 45 is um, 1.909, 1 we'll say, and then 2.7 sine of 45 is going to be the same thing. And that's because sine of 45 and cosine of 45 are just the same value. So that's where they're actually just the same speed in each direction. So we know we're going to travel with the speed of 1.909 this way, and then uh, 1.909 this way. So now here's how we actually solve the problem. So the way you do it is by creating two equations. We're going to create a, a, an equation for traveling in the x and an equation for traveling in the y. And the equation is going to be uh, based off the equation distance is equal velocity times time. So you should know that if you take uh, your velocity and multiply by time, you'll get how far you travel. So we're going to create one of each for each direction. So one of them for the x and one of them for the y. So I think it's easier to start off with the y. So keep in mind we're using this, distance equals velocity times time. Let's start with the y. So what we wanna do is look at the distance we travel in the y, which is 280 meters. So we travel 280 meters in the y with what velocity in the y? So we know in the y, our speed this way is 1.909 meters per second. And then we're gonna multiply it by time. So 
we know however far we travel the time we can find out how long this takes because we know the velocity uh, and we know the distance so we can find the time and you'll see why that's useful for this next part so now we're going to do it in the x so we just did it in the y but we're going to do it in the x now so um, the distance we travel in the x right here is 120 meters so uh, we would write that here 120 is equal to now we have the velocity so now i want you to think what is our velocity in this case so we know we're going to be traveling with some velocity here this way which is uh, 1.909 meters per second but i want you to keep in mind we have the river current so if we're moving this way but there's another thing pushing against it this way the velocity would be equal to this value 1.909 minus whatever this uh, river current is so let's say it's one meters per second uh, our actual value would be uh, we would be moving at is 0.909 because it's pushing against it this way kind of like forces if i push with a force of let's say 10 newtons this way and 5 newtons this way the net would be 10 minus 5. so hopefully that makes sense um, but yeah so we can say the velocity is 1.909 minus uh, and then we need a variable for the river current i'm going to go ahead and use uh, i'm just going to use x because uh, that's fine we'll just use x so we're going to solve for x and then we would multiply by t distance equals velocity times time so if we know what t is we can solve for the x because it's the only variable that would be left in this equation right here and the way we solve for time is getting it from this equation because the time it takes is the same in both we arrive uh, at the same time so right, traveling this way is the same amount of time as traveling this way so there's no component to it so really we can just plug it in here and then solve for x so hopefully that makes sense let's go ahead and do that so t in this case is 280 divided by this to cancel it so 280 divided by 1.909 um, so yeah let's go ahead and do that so 280 divided by 1.909 you're gonna get it equals 146.67 uh, and then this is in seconds but the units don't really matter and so now 120 equals 1.909 minus x times the time which we just solved for 146.67 dividing both sides to cancel it so 120 i'm going to use the exact value in my calculator when i do this so 0.818 is equal to 1.909 minus x so 1.909 minus this value you'll find that it equals one point sorry you're gonna get minus 1.090857 so i'm just gonna say minus 1.091 equals minus x and then the x's or the minus signs cancel so you have x equals 1.09 and then the units would be uh, meters per second. So this is just velocity, right? Because we use meters per second in the other one. So uh, the velocity here is going to be 1.09 uh, meters per second. That's going to be the speed with which it travels. So you can round however you'd like 1.1 uh, 1 or whatever you want to do. But I'm just going to leave it as this uh, 1.09. And uh, yeah, so 1.09 meters per second, that's going to be the velocity of your river current so it's going to be flowing this way with 1.09 uh, meters per second that's its speed uh, but yeah so that's going to go ahead and be your answer so speed of the river current right here and yeah hopefully you found this useful